Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And today we are talking about Go, the programming language developed by Google. And we're gonna talk about it specifically for the ecosystem around it for developing games. Now, if you've never heard of Go, as I mentioned, it was developed by Google for their use in-house. Uh, it's actually a who's who of language designers behind it, including one of the people who is directly responsible. Well, he's for developed B, which led to C, and off it goes from there. Ken Thompson, among other computer scientists involved in this one, this is a language with a lot of pedigree behind it. And it's actually being used a ton. If you want to go ahead and grab Go, it is available at go.dev, which is possibly one of the best URLs I've ever seen as well. It's available for Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, and other platforms out there. It is completely free. This is an open source project. And you can see in terms of companies that are using Go, it's a little bit of everybody. When you've got Google and Microsoft Facebook and Dropbox and all that on here. Yeah, it is a well-used language for sure. But the kicker is here's what you can see next. What's possible with Go and you see like command line interfaces, networking, web development, DevOps, and so on. You're not seeing a whole lot of game development. I'm gonna be honest, this is, I could not find a single commercial game written using Go. If you know one, please let me know it in the comments down below. But what I could definitely see is using Go on the back end server. But that said, even though you may not be working on a commercial title or you might be exploring all their options, etc., uh, there are some Go frameworks and libraries out there. And that's what we're going to look at in this particular video. Now, in terms of what Go has been used to make, it's a ton of things. Um, Kubernetes, Ethereum, Docker, uh, a lot of really huge things on the um, you know corporate enterprise side of things. It's used in-house for Google for all kinds of things. Cloudflare, Dropbox, MongoDB, Uber uses it, Twitch, Uber, uh, Twitch uses it, etc. So these these systems that really need to scale up, that is where Go really shines. It was designed to be like C++ in terms of performance, but not in terms of um, ambiguity. The language should be very straightforward and reliable and safe in what it does. It's also just designed to be heavily parallel. So in a world where we've got more and more cores or workloads being split across machines, that's where Go really kind of comes into its prime. In terms of game development, mm, well, we'll see what the options are out there. Now I've done this for a number of other languages in the past, including C Sharp, C++, Hacks, JavaScript, Lua, Python, uh, a selection of codeless game engines. And then I also did a little bit on Rust. I got to revisit Rust, do it in a little bit more depth. I've covered a couple of frameworks around Rust, etc. So now we're going to look at the ones that are available for Go. Now, the nice thing is when you've got a uh, open source language, a lot of times an open source community and open source ethos, most of your um, frameworks out there are open source. And I think every single thing we're looking at today is ultimately an open source project. So do keep that in mind. The first one, I have no idea how to say it, but it's eBay. I'm going to go with eBitten. I got no idea if that's right or not, but what eBitten is, is the most recommended and popular suggested when you search for Go game development. This seems to be the go-to, the de facto out there. So if you're looking to do um, simple API for doing 2D games, that's what this is all about. So you can do things like it's, it's performant, it's production ready. One of the things that this one does that a lot of the other ones don't is the platforms that it hits. So they work on desktop, including Windows, Mac, OS, Linux, FreeBSD, but also in the web browser and even mobile. That, now that mobile deployment, that's not something we're going to see, I don't think in any of the rest of that we were looking at, at least not fully supported. So if you wanna hit as many platforms as possible uh, and you're looking for kind of a simple 2D API, uh, EBIT is probably the way to go. It is up on GitHub. There's decent documentation. We've got examples in place so you can see how to go ahead and do things. And you, you're handling things like game audio, graphics, and so on. And you're gonna find Go code is, it, it's pretty readable. And one of those things I did like about Go is it's because of its simplicity, it got rid of things like uh, polymorphism and inheritance and so on. It's just straightforward structs and, um, interfaces. That's kind of the way things work. Uh, they got rid of a lot of the uh, confusion or complication of other languages. So you're going to find Go is pretty easy and straightforward to pick up. So when you look at the source code for these projects, you're generally going to probably like it, even if you don't really understand the language yet. All right, so that's the first one. Uh, now, the next most recommended one after Ebitten is probably Pixel. Now, Pixel, I, I've heard, was highly inspired by uh, the other libraries, I'm not 100% certain that is true. And here you can see a breakdown of its features as well. And you're looking the same kind of stuff. So it's got 2D graphics, fast drawing, you've got image batching and so on. Uh, simple APIs, documented, but here's where you kind of get into a catch. It only works on desktop OSs. Um, and you've got minimal input handling in here, I think. 
And then there's a couple of things that are missing, such as anti-aliasing support for HTTP displays, mobile HTML5 backend, uh, Vulkan, and so on. So if you're looking for a little bit more of a mature library, uh, Ebitten is probably your best choice. But if it doesn't do it for you for some reason, uh, check out Pixel. Now, this is a little discouraging right now, uh, but I only included things on this list that were uh, reasonably under development. And as you can see, again, they're all under some kind of a usable open source license. Uh, then the next one we've got is Engo. Engo is a full game engine written in Go. This one is different in that it uses an ECS or an entity component system. So if you like that uh, kind of approach to your code thing, this is your next option. Now, this one actually does show uh, building for mobile, but it is under conceptual explanation. So I don't know exactly what they're saying there in terms of uh, functionality. This one is up on GitHub. Uh, you can see kind of examples of how to work with. Let's go look at a simple hello world example. So that is your minimum hello world, by the way. And here we can see the setup for So like I said, if you've never experienced Go before, it does lead to very clean and simple to understand code. And here you can see their simple hello world here. So this one is Ngo. The big thing with Ngo over the other ones is it takes an ECS approach. And then next up, we have the first language binding we were talking about here. Now, this is actually a C library that I'm highly recommending, by the way. Raylib is an excellent library if you are looking to just learn the C or C++ programming language and want to do graphical work, etc. I've done a number of videos on Raylib. Highly recommend it. One of the nice things about Raylib is it has language bindings for just about every language ever made. Hey! including Go. So that one's pretty straightforward. If you want to do uh, Go development, you can. There is a little bit more extra steps you're going to run through, uh, but it is documented here. So you can see a very simple example of uh, a Raylib project. Once again, it's really clean and easy to understand code. That's the nice thing about, again, having a language that strips it down to the simple stuff makes the code pretty easy to go with. Uh, it is under the unmodified Zlib or libping license, very uh, permissive licenses is what you can do. And again, if you are not necessarily interested in Go, but you're looking for a simple to understand 2D graphics library with some basic 3D stuff thrown in there, highly recommend Raylib. Do check that out. And if you are using Go specifically, there are a set of language bindings for you. And then in terms of language bindings also, we have SDL2 for Go is a wrapper for Go users. SDL2 is a very mature, uh, 2D graphics. So it does things from drawing sprites on screen, to creating a window to handling input. SDL2 has probably been used in, I think it's fair to say, hundreds of commercial projects. It might even literally be thousands. Uh, so it's a very battle tested project. These are a set of bindings so you can use it in Go. Once again, I do find this a little bit discouraging. And I think you're going to have to just expect that a little bit. Now, the scary part here is if it's currently failing on build. It hasn't been updated in five months there. So um, just do be aware of that. And, and do be aware that if you decide to go with Go, pun not intended, you're going to have these kind of growing pains. It's, it's just kind of the nature of the beast. And if you're kind of coming around to it, you probably want to pick the very first choice I talked about. So now we're moving into the world of 3D. And we don't have a ton to talk about here, actually. We've got a set of Vulcan bindings. These are uh, January last update. So they, they are being updated. Nine months ago, there was an update here, but not a ton of details there under the MIT licenses, which are nice and straightforward. This is binding, Go language bindings for the Vulkan API. Vulkan is a uh, fun experience. It, it, you've got to write a lot of code to get a triangle on screen, for example. But if you want to start doing that, the nice thing is there are a set of Go bindings out there. So if you want to roll your own engine, you want to do your own 2D or 3D game engine, and but you want to have the basics taken care of for you, someone has done a set of language bindings for Vulkan, which is good. And they currently support Vulkan 1.8 uh, 1 spec, by the way. So uh, there's also a set of demos that you can jump into and check out. So if you want to roll your own from a very low level with Vulkan APIs out there, you can do so using the Go language. And then finally, we have the only 3D game engine on the list, and this is G3M. This is a Go 3D game engine. Um, is OpenGL powered, written in Go, use cross-platform, uh, 
it's got its own UI layer, etc. If I go on down here, we got the feature set. So it's cross-platform, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and 90% of WebAssembly. Notice no mobile in that case. Got its own GUI built in with many widgets, hierarchical scene graph, 3D spatial audio using OpenAL, real-time lighting, physically based rendering, model loaders, including GLTF, wavefront object format, and Collada, uh, geometry generators for boxes, spheres, torses, etc. Geometry support, morph targets, multi-material support for animated sprites on a sprite sheet, perspective, and um, ortho, ortho graphics, orthographic cameras, uh, text images, Im image textures loading in, GLSL shaders, and so on. Um, you can see an example of creating a 3D world here. It's pretty straightforward, actually. It's still not a lot of complication. So if you're looking for 3D framework, but you want to have, you know, quite a bit higher level than rolling your own using Vulkan. As far as I can tell, and again, I am 100% open to additional recommendations because Go is not really my forte, and Go is, in all honesty, not really a great idea or choice for game development unless you've got a very specific reason. It might be an excellent choice, again, for back-end infrastructure and server and that kind of stuff, but the ecosystem around Go it's not amazing. In fact, uh, that, that's it, actually. We've come to the end of the list, at least as far as I know. Now, one thing you can find is if you go back to go.dev, you can discover a number of packages right here. So you come in here and you can search for something like OpenGL, and you're going to find a number of projects that either use OpenGL or bind things or implement uh, OpenGL binds. So you got OpenGL ES2 and ES3 bindings here, et cetera. It's just a matter of how, how mature these things are. So you got, again, a lot of projects that were started, but not necessarily, you know, finished or done anything with. But you'll find there's a ton of stuff up here for this. Um, see if there's a gamepad library, for example. So if you're surfing for something beyond what I did, a big thing you can do is basically just come on in here, do discover packages, and hopefully you can find an additional project that you want to work with. But I would say from at least my very, 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 very limited experiences here, uh, I would probably start with um, eBitten because basically it has the largest community. Or if you're going to go uh, the 3D route, uh, this um, J sorry, G3N is probably the first area I would go anyways. Uh, but uh, Go is, it's not really a huge language. And I, I would say it's, you know, every single other language I can think of for the most part, uh, C++, C, C Sharp, uh, Java, JavaScript, Rust, uh, they're all probably more popular and have more ship titles and more frameworks available than the Go language does. But Go itself, again, it's it's nice, it's parallelizable, it, uh, parallelizable, parallelizable. It's got um, a lot of corporate support behind it. The language isn't gonna go anywhere anytime soon. Um, it's just the, never really a game development ecosystem built up around it. And yeah, so that's where we're at. So if you're looking to develop with Go programming language to do games, uh, I will link all of the stuff we just talked about in the linked article down below. And of course, uh, I am not a Go developer. I certainly may have missed a highly recommended library. Or if you know of a commercial game that was shipped and developed using Go, I would love to hear about it. Uh, let me know in the comments down below uh, if there's something else that I didn't cover. And I would gladly add it to the list. All right, that's it. Let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you all later.